Welcome to another Guide You Outdoors video. Join me as I skin out to my favorite lean-to and spend the night. I'm gonna bring some really cool technology, my sense of adventure, and of course my dog. Come along. In our videos, we usually focus on a simple approach to getting outside, unplugging from technology and plugging into nature. But here I'm going to use a little different approach. Truth is, at Guide You Outdoors, we use a lot of technology to connect to everybody on the internet, from cameras to YouTube to Facebook and all the other social medias. So I'm a huge gearhead, and I'm bringing out a few of my favorite pieces of backcountry technology. Let's start with Goal Zero's solar panels. These things are hard panels, you know, got some flex, they're sturdy. They got a carabiner, you just hang it off your backpack. It's pretty awesome. And then it's got a USB and also a 12 volt connector so you can plug in items. This model is the Nomad 7. It gives a 5 watt output on the USB and a 4 watt output on the 12 volt. What I've got this plugged into is a little outdoor portable speaker. This is by Fresh e Tech. It's got a little carabiner as well, so you can hang it off your backpack and bump tunes. Let's turn it on and get it going while I unpack my bag here. Clip it to the mouse food bag protector. I've synced it to my phone. Thank you to my friend Big Stat for the tunes. Now it's time to unpack, bump some tunes, maybe dance battle my dog. You wanna dance? You wanna dance? They say impatience is a virtue. I've been waiting in my circle. No more waiting, it's time to take it cause it's later than my curfew. The music that I'm making to take so for the commercial. They hate and keep on hating to your faces. So, should be pretty indestructible, ready? So good. Hold on, we might just kick that at a distance. Let's go. Well, I dented it, but it's still bumping hard. All right, so I'm pretty impressed with the Freshy Tech speaker. I've been bumping it for a while now. I really like the volume it puts out for such a tiny thing. I like the carabiner. You can put it on your bag or wherever. Um, it says it's water resistant, so I think that's the next test. I already booted it into the snow with my ski boot, put a little dent in it, but still working fine. So, water resistant. Let's check it out. Believe it, I can see it, I can see that I'm gonna be it, I'm gonna live it, and I'm gonna. All right, this is what I'm looking for. I know what you're thinking. We've got a guy with a beard in Vermont bumping some tunes at the shelter. What a hipster. So to show you that I'm not, this is the real deal. I'm going to pull down this white pine and make a bow drill set. And we're going to talk about fire starting techniques. This is called one-stop shop for fire. 
This is going to be like most of my wood for the night. And it's a jet standing pine, so, you know, in the winter sometimes wood's hard to find. This has been upright all winter, just drying. And not only am I going to make a bow drill set out of it, but I'm going to have a bunch of wood for my fire once I process all this. So let's just drag this back to the shelter and get going. So now what I'm looking for are some nice straight branches or the end uh, for a spindle and then a nice straight kind of log here for a fireboard. And those will be my two main things I need. And then the rest is firewood. I've broken off the top. It was a nice straight piece towards the top. And what I'm doing is whittling a spindle. So down here I kind of have a, a duller nipple here. And then on this side I have a pencil tip. So I want less friction, lots of friction. This is the top of my spindle. It's very sharp, not a lot of friction. This is the bottom where it's going to be going into the wood and creating a lot of friction to create that heat and create a little coal. I found a little nice straight board here I'm going to make using my knife and saw. This is nice and dead so should saw like butter. Now we want to get a board out of this. So we're going to take our knife, kind of press it into the top here. This is nice soft dead wood. Find yourself a big ogre club and then we're going to try and bash this knife through this piece of wood. Like that. And then just hit this outer edge. So see how that's flat? If we take it off on the other side very carefully, we'll have a nice board. There's our board. Get the rod out of here. Carve away from yourself. Get these sides off. And we're just gonna try and get this nice and flat. In front of me is everything I need to start a friction fire using a bow drill. So to complete this set, I've got my fireboard and my spindle that I've harvested from a white pine. I have a bow, which is just any piece of bent wood. This happens to be a striped maple root. I have a rock that I picked up. And then you take a hard rock, like a quartz rock, maybe the sharp end, and just drill into this. You hear that sound? Just keep on drilling. This is gonna take a lot of time. We're gonna create a little hole in there like such. Remember, less friction, lots of friction. So here, this is slipping into that little hole. You get a lot of pressure down, creating a lot of friction here on our fireboard. Next, I've got a saw to cut our notch, a knife, which is always helpful, and I got a tinder bundle, which I have some caribou moss here and some shredded birch bark. I'm going to take my knife and create a little notch for my spindle to go. This is nice soft wood, so it fits in there very well. Alright, so wrap the spindle in your bow, put it in that little notch you've created, okay? And then get your top rock, put it on top here. And we're going to need to secure this fireboard on the ground here. Alright, now we're just trying to start a little hole here. So just go slow, back and forth using the whole bow. Remember to breathe. And once you find your rhythm, 
apply a lot of pressure on this hand, on your top rock. Now that our hole is deep enough, we're going to cut a notch that our pump can fall in. That's that little sawdusty stuff. It's going to build up in that notch, reach that section where we're making a lot of heat in, and create a coal. Got our notch. It's time to create some heat. Fill that notch up. Now that my notch is filled up with pump, it's time to create a lot of down pressure, a lot of speed, a lot of friction, and heat that thing up so it becomes a coal. I'm just gonna take this punk and build it up. Set myself up for success. Grab some pine cones. These are nature's fire starters. Rich, dry stuff that's been hanging up in the trees. And it's just fallen and it's covered in pine pitch as well. So that's gonna be the base. We'll throw all this on top. Let's go check on our coal. Coal's looking really healthy and big. So I have a little nest for it. I'm gonna create a nice bed for this to go in. Drop our coal in. And scoot it through the center a little. We broke it, that's not a good sign. And then just gentle breaths. There we go. There's our bow drill fire. And now I just set it in those pine cones. Maybe get one on top there. Throw this over. And there you have it. Fire. Now that I've shown you the most primal fire building technique and proved to you that I'm not a hipster, let's work our way up and use some of what technology is provided. So our next is flint and steel. I've got a piece of char cloth here. I'm gonna try and scrape off some of the metal from this steel striker, create a hot spark, and land it on this char cloth. All right. So I've landed. Flint and steel char cloth. Apply that to a tinder bundle, it'll go right up. That's way hotter than that little coal we just made. Our next, we're going to use the Light My Fire Fire Striker. Just take a knife and kind of take to the birch bark. Try and build up a little pile of some nice fine birch bark. And then, don't let the wind take it away. And you see that? We're creating sparks. 
off this magnesium rod. There we go. Fire. The next thing I'm going to use is a magnesium fire striker. Um, that one was a magnesium striker as well, but it's kind of just scraping it off and you're, you're getting that one burst. With this, you scrape off this magnesium side and then hit this striker with your knife and you've got a little pile of magnesium that'll light up and go quicker. So Now I've got a little pile of magnesium off this back side. Same thing with the striker. It's going to give us a little extra buffer with all that magnesium. There we go. All right. So now that we've played around with cool fire starting techniques, let's check out the stove I brought. This next piece of gear I'm really excited about. I love when technology can be multi-purpose out in the back country. And this BioLite stove exemplifies that. We've got a stove here. You create a fire in here. That's nothing special. You boil your pot. Cool. All right, we can use it out here. But this unit is what makes it. This is a little fan that makes it super efficient and also you have a USB port so right here this unit gets a lot of heat and creates through the convection creates a USB charge so you can charge your gear out here and cook your meal at the same time so let's take a look at it let's get it going play with it a little fold the tripod out now I'm gonna get the little fan going here, power up. So you need an initial charge to get going. I'm gonna drop some birch bark in here. And uh, let's talk about our last favorite technology item for fire, a lighter. All right, drop that in there. And then send the sticks down. quieted down a little and I've got this green light so now I can charge things like my iPhone. Alright, right there. You heard it kind of cycle down when I plug that in. Um, maybe it stole a little electricity from the fan. So with this little fan feeding this fire, it burns super hot and super quick. So you're going to continually have to keep adding sticks to it. And maybe that's a downside, but I'm charging my phone with fire while cooking. How are you going to complain about that? While I'm heating up water, I'm going to plug another piece of my favorite gear. This is Hydro Flask. I've used a lot of different thermoses, and by the time I get to the last sip, it's cold within two to three hours. This thing, I can let it sit overnight out in the cold and it's still warm in the morning. This thing is ridiculous. The only downside is I don't have a little cup to pour it into like other flasks or um, thermoses, but this thing is double wall construction, pretty bomb proof, comes in sweet colors, and it keeps it warm longer than any thermos I've found. And on that note, we're almost at a boil. Let's throw that in for a some hot tea. My phone's battery has gone up 1% in the time it took me to boil water and fill my hydro flask. I'm pretty pumped on this. Um, you can check out our video where we plug in all kinds of devices and see what it will charge, but what a great stove. The sun has set and Hiker's Midnight is approaching fast. You probably noticed I've got my winter booties on. And I got my sleeping bag out earlier and stuffed my ski boots down into the end. This is a long sleeping bag and I'm not a really tall guy so um, this really affords me to shove boots down there. And then what I've got going on here is a foam mat for my dog and an inflatable therm rest for me. I just unzip my sleeping bag and throw it over both of us. I'm a snuggler so is Summit. Works out great, um, even though I'm not mummied in my sleeping bag, some puts off so much heat that I don't really worry about it. Now if this doesn't work for you, another suggestion is grab the foam mat, scoot it out, mummy yourself in, and buy a child sleeping bag. And just throw it over your dog, it'll keep him nice and toasty. 
just grabbed my hydro flask here, which I filled up around noon, and now it's about 8 o'clock. Still, still hot. chilly night. You can tell from Summit kind of shivering this morning that being out of the bag is chilly. So I've set myself up for success with a bunch of sticks. I've got my stove right here and I'm going to start off with some coffee to help coax me out of the bag. The water in my hydro flask is no lot longer hot. It's not cold though. There's no ice in it so that's a great sign. Another trick to keeping your water unfrozen, you can put it in your sling bag, but I've already got my ski boots and a dog under here, so this is a cozy for your Nalgene. And you can see there's kind of some ice in here, but it's not major. It's mostly all water. And this has just been out overnight, probably zero degree weather. So that's great. Also another little trick is Keep your lighter in your pocket. This will help you in the morning. Well, that's a pretty good sign for for being overnight in the cold. And it fired right up. Alright, now I've got some water on for coffee. I'm also going to use the excess water to fill up some of its bowl and then kind of melts to know until I get a lukewarm temperature because you can damage a dog's organs from drinking super cold water. So something to keep in mind when you're camping in a dog. Unfortunately, I gotta get out and get my coffee and milk and sugar. <clears throat> when I go winter camping, I like fresh hot meals, especially in the morning. And sometimes that can be a problem with the cold and everything freezing. But if you use the snow and the great insulation it provides, you can create a little fridge. Get yourself a nice shovel like this, where it kind of breaks apart, super light. Dig yourself a little pit, cover it with some blocks, and voila. You have a 32 degree temperature fridge. This is GSI's coffee press. Great little system. Everything stows in here. Thread this through the top and screw it into this press part. No need for refills, it's got a fine, fine filter there. And I like my coffee pretty strong, so I'm going to use all this. water in. Then just wait a couple minutes, press this down. We've got fresh grounds. Press it down, squeeze those grounds to the bottom. There's my milk. And we are in Vermont, so I brought maple syrup. If you haven't discovered maple syrup in your coffee, Doing something wrong. Mmm, delicious. Now I'm gonna heat up a little more water for my dog and move on to breakfast. First, add some oil. Just kind of scramble this whole mixture in there. 
breakfast is served. That's what I'm dealing with. I'm just gonna go right on top, stir it in, get my sriracha out, give it a little kick. Yeah. We go Rancheros, coffee, beautiful view. What else could you ask for? Well, all journeys come to a close, and this is the end of mine. My coffee is dwindling down to the last couple sips. So it's time to crawl out of this bag, pack up, and head home. I hope I've inspired you to get out and try a similar trip to this. I hope you enjoyed the backcountry technology I brought and the primitive skills I've shown. So if you like what you saw, check out more videos at GuideYouOutdoors.com. And thanks for watching.